come to this EPBF conference on becoming a source of social good. What an enormous challenge. How can you say that that should be the focus of your life at the time when the world is disintegrating? We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're facing you know, a climate crisis. The economy is, is collapsing. Everything is going wrong. Wherever we look, the world is being driven by you know, the animal values of human nature, you know, the, the ego side of things. The politician is driven by ego. The businessman is driven by ego. The company is driven by profit. You know, the nation is driven by national sovereignty, defending your, your own view versus the rest of the world. You know, all of these are the wrong values for society. And they're, they're taking us you know, towards you know, global existential crises. You know, our future is really in danger. And so it's so important to say, what can we do to become a source of social good? What can we do to be on the side of integration as opposed to the side of This is not the time to dig a bunker and get, to go underground and collect a year's worth of food and say, you know, I'm going to live out the apocalypse you know, by hiding. On the contrary, this is the time when we should be courageous and going out to, to face the talent of society and for solutions. And so what, if you're all here, something attracted you to EBBF. There was something special about EBBF. So what is it that is unique about EBBF as an organization? And I'd say perhaps because it is what we call Baha'i inspired. And there's, we turn to the principles and teachings of the Baha'i faith for what light they shed on the situation we're in and, and where we go for the future. And that's, that's something unique to EPBF. You know, other business organizations may talk about corporate social responsibility and, and this and that, but there's always something missing. There's that sense of a higher human purpose, the sense that we're not simply you know, animals. We also have a higher nature, you know, a sense of dignity, a sense of responsibility for each other, what you might call a spiritual dimension, more than just the material side. We need that balance of material and spiritual civilization if we want to go forward. And that we're very much out of balance in that in, in the world today. <clears throat> so we, we need to work for a fundamental transformation from that present world to a future world. And we're not the only ones to say that. Look at the United Nations 2030 agenda, sustainable goals. It calls for a paradigm shift, a fundamental transformation in society. But we don't know how to do that. There are all these forces resisting it. That power of ego and national sovereignty is very strong. And struggling against that is not so easy when you have such power forces and so much money defending the status quo and defending you know, vested interests. So this is what we're struggling with as we try to say, what can we do in our workplaces, you know, in our business, you know, in our own lives to be on, on, on the positive side, on the integrative side? I often see this as... You know, when you look at a systems, well, I'm a system scientist, and so I think in terms of integrated whole. And you say, what is it about systems? If you go to the deepest level, it's the rules by which they work. Imagine you're a computer programmer. You're working in artificial intelligence, or you're developing a neural network. You have to get the algorithm right. What actually you want? There may be lessons we learned. There's not all going to be successful. We don't necessarily have the ultimate answer, but by getting the rules right, they'll be learning some. Options will seed, others will fail, this will break here and there. But gradually, out of that process will evolve a much better system that comes. So you might say that the Baha'i principles are the algorithm for building a world civilization for the next thousand years. Now, when you start with that kind of an algorithm, you may not know where we go next. You say, but no, if we follow those principles, those basic rules, those basic concepts, they will help us find the multiple ways forward toward the future that we really want to build, that we really want to live in. <clears throat> so what are some of the dimensions of that? I can't go all of them. You'll find them all through, through EVVF. But one simple one, for instance, is work is worship. Work is not simply something you need to do to, to earn a living, or, or otherwise you will starve. We motivate you to keep going to the job every day, because otherwise you'll want to be lazy and sit in front of the television and you know, eat Mac, Big Macs or whatever, <laughs> you know, be part of the consumer society. But you, if you start by saying, but work has a spiritual purpose. Work helps me grow. Work is one way I can be of service to society. I contribute in some way, in some small way or big way. Each of us has our own path of, of, you know, of service. But starting with that concept of you know, our professional life as being part of our service, part of our own spiritual growth, totally transforms the way we approach you know, that side that side of our lives. I mean, looking at the economy. The economy should have a social purpose. It's not simply to make profits of the biggest corporations and to concentrate as much wealth as possible in the billionaires at the top, and it's getting worse and worse from that point of view. 
So it's far from the neoliberal you know, conception of the economy, as a president, which many people say is out of date, is broken. There's lots of experimentation. Saying, what are the other ways of rethinking of the economy? Well, some of the Baha'i principles. Well, the economy should have a social purpose. It should really be to enable humanity to fulfill its higher destiny, to fulfill its, its capacity in increasing human consciousness, increasing the wealth and beauty of our society in sustainable ways, in protection with the natural you know, limits of the planet that we must learn to live in. It should be altruistic and cooperative. How different those values are from the values of competition and survival of the fittest that are driving the present economic system. How much that transformed everything we look about in the, in the, in the role of a corporation, of a business, you know, in the way in which they, they work, in the way in which we plan you know, our ways forward. It should be creating meaningful work. If work has a higher meaning, then every human being has a right to a meaningful job, something they can do, to, and therefore society must give everybody the training they need to to use their skills in some way and the opportunity to use them. This idea of unemployment is an enormous waste of human resources. Gender prejudice is a waste of human resources. Racial prejudice is a waste of human resources. All of these things need to be overcome to say every human being should be contributing in some way and society to give them the opportunity to contribute. And then of course, we clearly need a system that eliminates poverty in the world. You know, here we have more and more wealth than ever before in history. And yet half the world population struggles to make ends meet. And the, you know, the number of extreme poor living on less than $1.90 a day is increasing by hundreds of thousands with the pandemic. <clears throat> this is ridiculous. At the same time that the multi-trillionaires are vying to see who can get the, the, the most money <clears throat> and who can pay the fewest taxes. You know, there's all of these imbalances, these wrong things going aside that we need to address, whether they're large scale or a small scale. <clears throat> So what does this mean in terms of your own work? What does this mean in terms of what we want to say about discourses on a new economic system? When we can participate in these discussions in society at whatever level you're at, with your neighbor in your community, you know, in, in your local area, in your business, if you have an opportunity, if you're in academia or whatever, you know, at higher levels, we all have some way we can take this new creative thinking forward. So how can we build a better future? Each of us has to find our own way forward. Each has to say, what can I do in my organization, in my workplace? What can I do in my own life to try to, to, to live these things? And of course, part of it is changing ourself. You know, clearly, if we, we can't do the same, the mechanics of the system and leave it full of ego-driven you know, people all you know, clawing over each other to get to the top of the pile. We have to change people as well. And therefore, we can work at transforming ourselves, set an example for others, showing that it's possible to be you know, altruistic and other-centered and focused on service and still be a useful part of society. All of this, you know, that personal example, really can inspire others to try to do the same thing. We can also think, what can we do you know, in EBBF? What can we do you know, in understanding our own reality and our own situation? And how do these principles help us to find a way to take the next steps forward? always doing it in a spirit of learning. You know, we, we don't have the answers. And we're here in EBVF or outside in our life and wherever, so we, you know, we, we all need to be learning together, accepting we make mistakes and having the humility to accept, well, I mean, that didn't work, I tried it. We can try something, try something else to see if we can find a way forward. This is all part of that process of building a new and greater civilization step by step you know, through all of the catastrophes and crises that are happening on us, we don't know where we're going to. We may see a major collapse in the economy or in society. You know, things are more and more fragile. And yet these principles help us always to find a direction forward, a way through it, a positive way towards the future. So I hope that this experience you will have in the EPBF conference, you know, in this, you know, these next few days, we're only virtually, we can't really be together in person, but we can share with each other. We can each draw on our own experience you know, share what we've learned with others, learn from others as well, and together continue to build step by step a better vision of the future, which is what EBBF is all about. Thank you for being here.